Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Anthony Co-Francesco from Data Dive, and today I am really excited to be sharing with you our enterprise beta release. This is our new enterprise feature, which now all Data Dive users get access to. This is going to be a little bit of a long video, but what I want to say is we are building the future of project management tools that are specifically designed for Amazon FBA. So get ready to take some notes. Please understand that this is the beta version of this tool. So it's not all perfect. There are going to be updates, but the teams that learn and integrate these enterprise features now are going to be way ahead of the game. And I think just from watching this video, you're going to get an idea for just how helpful and just how powerful these tools are. This is just the start. Let's dive in. So the first new enterprise feature that I want to walk through is spaces. And also, I want to say some of this stuff is going to be pretty intuitive. We're just making these explainer videos to get you from a zero to one. If some of this seems overly basic, just please try to bear with us. We're trying to put out some good information that everyone can use. So we've added this new sidebar inside of the niche pipeline, which allows you to greater categorize niches uh, with a little bit more precision. And so basically what spaces are, these are different buckets that you can put niches into, right? And so on this left-hand side, you're going to see what these spaces are. Now you can put these niches into different spaces and you can control who has access over these different spaces. And so as you go through and build out these different spaces, deciding where you want to put these different niche groups, they're going to be displayed here on the left-hand side. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more or to manage these spaces, you can either click the learn more or manage spaces buttons. You can also inside of this area, you can tag team members in multiple spaces at the same time. After clicking enter, now Data Dive is going to remember these preferences for your shared spaces. Also, now when you navigate to a specific niche, you're going to see the information for spaces up there at the top of the page. As well, if you go and you look at the access, you're going to be able to see everyone who has access to that space right inside of the niche research. Keep in mind that you cannot set an access right for an individual niche access is going to be given to the entire space, right? So if you want to assign access to an individual person, right, you're going to have to do that at the space level, not the niche level. But when you're inside of the niche, you're going to be able to see which space it is actually a part of. You can also navigate to space management on the left hand tab. That's going to be all the way down at the bottom of the page. And that's just going to give you a more comprehensive view of that space. So once you're inside of space management, here is where you can organize your hierarchy, right? You can change the position of these different spaces. You can put them into other subgroups or subspaces. Again, if this is sounding a little bit confusing, just go inside of the app, start playing around. I promise you it's very intuitive, but the first time it might be a little bit strange. You can also rearrange the spaces based on your preferences. And if you want to delete a space, this is where you can do that. Keep in mind, though, if you delete a space, it will delete all of the niches inside of that space, right? So just keep that in mind. So the next thing I want to take you to is the space access management. And this is all going to be for those spaces that you've created. This is going to allow you to toggle the settings of who in your organization has access to modify and manipulate those spaces. So you'll see here on the left-hand side, we've got all of our spaces. And then as we look across to the right, we're gonna be able to see who has access to these spaces. And then from these drop-down menus, you're gonna be able to say who is able to manage these, who's able to use these. You can even set access rights for an agency. If you're working with a third-party vendor or service provider, you're gonna be able to manage and view that access right here in space access management. So if you go through and click on these numbers here inside of the space management, you're going to be able to uh, see who has access and you can modify these. This is a really quick and easy way to go through. You can uh, click on these check boxes here and decide either by selecting or unselecting the check boxes who has access to these specific spaces. Again, a really great way for you to control uh, who's going to be able to manage and view different areas of your product portfolio if you're dealing with a lot of different brands. Remember, again, that access rights are cumulative across spaces, right, that a niche is assigned to. So anything inside of, like if you have a space and it's got 20 different niches inside of it, 
as you change the access rights to that space, it's going to apply to all of those individual niches, right? Access rights are not given on an individual level. They are given on the space level. Really important to keep in mind. Once you get that straight, you're not going to have any issues. Now, if you want a more detailed explanation of what use and manage levels mean, you can see that displayed here up on the top, but it's pretty straightforward. Manage is gonna be that they can change anything on the niche, they can assign space, they can change the assignee, versus use is gonna be that they can only view the niche. Uh, changing content for view only is not gonna be allowed or use only. So the next feature that I wanna walk through is labels. Now, labels are different than spaces. Important to keep in mind, spaces, remember, these are a way that you're gonna group a lot of different niches. Labels are these attributions that you can add for additional categorization uh, to your niches or to your spaces. And so what you're gonna find is that if you click on the learn more button, you're gonna see uh, additional information for the labels. And what we'll say is that we give you a handful of predetermined labels but you can go through and add your own at any time. You'll notice that the labels that we've built out in this beta version are related to workflow. So this is kind of going through a what we think is a standard workflow of uh, launching to growing and maintaining a product. That's why it's starting with research, then going to order samples, product design, listing, writing, and so on. So labels can be applied to any niche. Um, everyone on the team can see and use all labels, right? These are not restricted in terms of access. And again, these are just additional descriptors that you can uh, kind of put on to, to categorize the products, the niches, and the spaces that you're working with. And so really important to keep in mind is that you can assign multiple labels to a niche, right? A niche can obviously could fit in between multiple uh, groups here. And that's kind of the intention with labels. If you think spaces are uh, these really big overarching groups, they're not going to be duplicated. Labels are something that can be applied across many different niches, many different products. So labels are also really helpful for filtering results, right? You'll see here by selecting a label, you'll only see niches on that label. So now we're going to see we've put in the labels of research, product design, place order, right? We're going to be able to see all of these right here. So the next step that I want to show you here is inside of label management. Uh, like I said earlier, we've included some labels by default, but you can always go in and add more based on the needs of your organization, right? This is really just a starting point. Again, if this sounds a little bit strange, just go in, start playing around with labels. Think about what labels are going to be beneficial to your organization. Inside of label management, that's where you can customize, add, remove, or change the hierarchy of labels. And you can do that all right here inside of this tab. Now, if you actually go into the niche research, just like you saw with spaces, you're going to see the same information of labels right next to where spaces is. So you'll see here for labels, for this product, this garlic press, we have research, product design, place order, right? These different labels attributing to what this product actually is. Now you can edit and you can view the spaces and labels just by clicking this icon once you're already inside of a niche. Okay, so the next feature I wanna walk you through is assignees and team management. We've covered this already a little bit, but this is where we really dive in. So from the niche pipeline, we're gonna be able to see we've added this new assignee column. Again, this is very similar to you've seen, to what you've seen rather in other project management tools. Uh, where all niches now have assignees or team members in charge of that niche. And so you can modify those assignees here, right? Pretty cool. And you can also view and edit the assignee inside of the niche research, right? So again, just click on that edit icon and you can do all of this right inside of that tab. Another really cool thing about going through and updating your assignees to be the correct members of your team is now you can actually filter the results inside of the niche line by in, inside of the niche pipeline rather by assignee. So for example, my manager wanted to see all of the projects that were assigned to me. I could go through and filter that here by assignee. The niche is also accessible by the manager of the assignee, right? So if I wanted to go through, I could filter by Anthony, but my manager is going to be able to see any of the employees in the hierarchy that are underneath me. If you want to actually add on some customization to this, you should go to the team management tab. And this is where it allows you to kind of set up that hierarchy. You can deactivate and you can change users. 
So all you have to do is you can come in, you click on this edit icon, you can see the one for delete, and then this little up down arrow allows you to change the, uh, the hierarchy if you want it to be higher or lower in your company's organization. So the next feature that I want to walk you through is another heavily requested feature, and this is read only niches. So imagine you have an employee on your team who you're not quite confident with going into data dive and starting to make changes on research that your team might have already spent hours on. The read only feature is going to be really helpful for that. And so now you can create niches that are read only really important. And obviously, this doesn't need much explanation, but in read-only mode, a user will not have the ability to modify data, right? So with read-only access, that user is going to be able to go in and see all of the data. They can go through and use all of the sorting and filtering features, but certain things like MKL filters, MKL parameters, trying to exclude keywords, excluding competitors, none of this is going to be available in read-only. Right. So again, really helpful tool if you have newer or potentially less experienced members of your team in regards to data dive. Also, just worth noting, I know we mentioned it already, but read only users cannot exclude keywords. And again, this is really intentional. We want that level of access to only be available. If you're excluding keywords, it can really mess up your entire dive. And so read only very helpful feature to use there. Also worth noting, a read-only user is not going to be able to adjust any of the content in the listing builder. They'll be able to see it, right? They'll be able to click around that page, but they're not going to be able to actually change any of the information there. So the next feature that I want to walk you through is the board view. And if you've used other project management tools in the past, you're going to say, hey, this is something similar. And a lot of people are asking us, is the thought one day to integrate data dive with other project management platforms? And the answer is yes. In the long term, we don't expect everyone to do everything through data dive. If you're using other tools, uh, we're already building out those integrations, so it's gonna work seamlessly. So if you wanna switch from the table view into the board view, you're just gonna use this toggle at the top of the page. You're gonna click that for board view. And by default, the board view is going to be totally blank at start. And so if you go through and select the drop down menu here, you're going to be able to organize the board view by spaces, labels, or assignees. And so basically what you do after that is you can now view your labels here and select to display columns in the board view, right? So just go through, select what you want to see, right? You have the option of selecting multiple labels, right? You can choose whatever you want. And then bam, like magic, the columns are now going to start to show in board view. Now, the really cool thing about being in this board view is uh, you're going to be able to see all of these labels here uh, right in one spot. And if you actually have something with multiple labels right here for product research and product design, it's actually going to be displayed twice if you're filtering by label. Now, the really cool thing about using the board view is you can just drag and drop something into a different column and then it's going to be reassigned. Right. So pretty cool there. You can also modify how you'd like to group items in the board view. So right now we're, uh, you know, we have everything set up by labels, but I could go and do a further grouping by clicking the drop down menu. And now I could group by spaces, uh, however I'd want. So now I can see, uh, see these broken down into two separate columns, right? So now they're, uh, they're actually categorized by these different labels as well. So you can also group niches by assignee to see the breakdown of all the niches they control. This is a really popular view. And so again, if you want to now reassign a project very quickly, you can just drag and drop it into another assignee, and then it's going to be now assigned to that. If you are a project manager, you're going through one of the helpful tools that you're going to like is you click this toggle up here at the top of the screen for include unassigned. And now it's going to give you a column of all of the unassigned projects. And so now, let's say it's the beginning of the week, or you're just getting started with these new enterprise features. Now you can actually drag these different projects, these different items, and you can actually start to assign them right here in the board view to different users. Again, this is still in the beta version of this, but we know people are going to love this because they've been asking for quite some time. You can also build out additional filters here by clicking the filter button. Just remember to go through and name your filter and then click save filter. And then now after saving, this filter is gonna be available by name. 
You can apply these filters in the board view as well as the table view. And uh, the filter is only going to show niches, obviously, that contain the requirements of that filter, right? Pretty straightforward. So the next feature that I'm going to walk you through is comments. This one is pretty straightforward. If you've used Google Drive, G Suite, you've seen comments before, but very, very helpful in regards to data dive because we know how complex and complicated some of these processes can be. If you go to the top right hand corner, you're going to see the comment icon. And so when you first bring this up, uh, all of the comment history is going to appear. Obviously, if there's been no comments, it's going to be blank. Uh, but as you start going through and making comments, this is going to populate here. You can even tag individual team members directly here inside of that comments tab and begin a dialogue about what work needs to be done for different areas of your research. Uh, really important as well is you can click this screenshot icon. You're not limited to just text and comments like you are with other tools. You can actually go through and select a screenshot in the app. After you take the screenshot, you're going to see a little preview, and then you can add that on into your comments. So as you and your team starts using the comment feature throughout Datadive, you're going to start to see notifications pop up inside of the Datadive app. That's going to be on the bell icon. And then if you click through that, you're going to see now a list of the historical comments, things that you need to go and respond to, any tags or mentions. Now, keep in mind that comments are page specific. So if you navigate to an empty page, right? If I was like, for example, I was in outlier keywords and I left a comment. If I went back to the master keyword list, you might not see any comments, right? So those comments are going to be page specific. History might be blank, right? Just keep that in mind. But if you want to, you can go and click the filter icon and you can actually select comments that apply to uh, all niches or the uh, current niches, all pages or the current page. So just click here, see all pages, Current page, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, the feature that I'm really not going to dive into today, but I encourage you to play around with a little bit in the app, is the Agency Explorer. Basically, we have a lot of people that are asking us, hey, I really want to implement data dive into my business, but I'm not either set up with my team to go and do that, or I'm just not confident in my team's ability to do as good as they need to do. So we're going to have a whole directory. You can see there's some placeholders in there right now for other service providers. This is going to get really, really built out. And if you know other agencies, other service providers that are experts in data dive and they want to show up in this agency explorer, stay tuned. Uh, we've already probably reached out to a handful of them, but play around with them. More updates to follow there. I believe this is the last feature that I'm going to walk through before we get to transition. And this is audit logs. Audit logs are pretty self-explanatory, but if you go to the bottom left of the page, you're going to be able to go to audit logs. And here is a spot where you can view all of the actions that have been taken on this account. So like if, for example, you're missing data, uh, you can actually go through to see here if a user has deleted it. And with these audit logs, you can filter by different types of actions. You can filter by description. You can filter by module, or you can even filter by the time when the action occurred. So just good if you need to do a little bit of troubleshooting. And the last thing that I'm going to cover, this one is a little bit complicated, uh, but this is transition. This is really for bulk assignment related to buckets, labels, assignees. This is going to allow you to merge different niches together. And this is going to talk a little bit about Amazon connections at the organization level. So basically, if you're inside of your niche pipeline and you start to select uh, multiple niches simultaneously, you're going to see all of these bulk operations options that come up. So we've got here merge niches, bulk space updates, bulk label updates, etc. And so when you click on the bulk space update button, you're now going to see a bulk assign feature. Uh, and so now you can actually reassign these to new niches as you see fit. Once you click the bulk assign button, it's going to redistribute those spaces into those uh, different groups as you've selected. Uh, the new bulk assign change uh, is going to be reflected here. So you can see that in spaces. And if you want to bulk update the labels in your niche, again, just click this button for bulk update labels. And very similar to bulk update spaces, you're going to be able to bulk update the labels. After you've gone through and done those bulk assign of the labels, you're going to be able to see all of those reflected here in the labels tab. And as well, if you want to go through and bulk remove any labels, you can do it in the same way. Instead of clicking bulk assign, you're going to click bulk remove. 
You can remove niches under an assignee. Again, all you have to do, very similar to labels and spaces, is you just go through, you select the different niches that you want to reassign, right? You're going to click the assignee bulk update, and then now you can go through, this is all blurred out, but you can go through and you can actually select how you want to bulk reassign those updates, bulk update, and that's going to allow you to do that all in one spot. Now, another really important thing, especially if you're just now getting into the enterprise tools, if you see a duplicate niche name and you want to either discard one while keeping the other, or you want to merge some of that data, you can do that here. So again, just select the niches that you want to include, click on merge niches, and then you're going to actually be able to select here exactly which aspects of the research you want to merge, which parts you don't want to merge, and then you click on this button here for merge niches, and then it's all gonna bring it into one niche, getting rid of the things that you didn't wanna have there. So the last thing we're gonna cover in this bulk operations is around Amazon connections. And we just have a really minor change here. Uh, back in the past, every single employee, every single Datadive account needed to go through and manually connect to an Amazon Seller Central or a PPC account. Now this is done on the organizational level. Right? So now you can actually share these connections across multiple team members as long as everyone all has access within that group. So same way as before, you can connect the Seller Central and PPC accounts here. It's pretty straightforward, but now not everyone needs to do it. So I know that was a super long video. Again, Datadive is a very complex tool. These new enterprise features are just currently in the beta. So if it seems a little confusing, if this video seemed like a little bit much, go through and just start playing around with the tool. I promise it's very intuitive. Keep in mind, this is really just the starting point. So if you're going through these new enterprise features and you're thinking, hey, this doesn't quite work, go and submit a bug request. You can do that by scanning this QR code, or you can actually go down at any point and click on the select feedback button that's in red, and we'll be able to help out. If you have any questions about our enterprise features, feel free to let us know down in this video below. And thanks so much for taking the time to watch. We will see you in the next video.